who was a sub-bay. It's important to say that he was born on a train. One day in Ukraine, he grew up in Baku, a Russian, a Jew. But was this who was a sub -bay? He lived in Berlin, to Allah he prayed. He once wrote a book called Allah is Great. A poser, a fascist in his very own way. But was this who was Esad Bey? So many stories, so many words, we could probably talk all day. But was this who was? Was this who was? Was this who was Esad Bey? Well, who was Esad Bey and what would he say if you met him? Shalom or Salah? Well, when he was a kid, he was only a Yid, who was known by the name Nusimbab. So many stories, so many words, we could probably talk all day. But was this who was? Was this who was? Was this who was? Was this who was? Lev Nusimbab was born 1905 in a Russian-speaking Jewish family in Baku. And his father was an oil magnate and his mother was a revolutionary. We're going to tell the story of this guy's life as far as we can sort of uh, guess about it. So, uh, and we're going to start at yeah, we'll before the, the beginning. <laughs> Things didn't work out so well for the, uh, the young Nussenbaum family in Baku. They were bad times to be an oil baron. <laughs> Some of the rare bad times to be an oil baron. So they took off. We ran from the Reds, the bloody Russian Reds, and hid ourselves over the border. Out in the desert, the lands of the sun, running from the Russian disorder. We ran from Caucasia, we ran to the south. We traveled through Persia and to the Bosporus mouth. The lands of the dervishes, pashas and sheiks, I'll take a bazaar over the south. Any day of the week, report. Konstantinopel wird nun Istanbul genannt. Ich, Orientus 
Men de Nobel, her kommer ich. Orient, du trau meiner Kindheit. Konstantin Nobel, erkennst du mich? Orient, du Sinn meines Lebens. Konstantin Nobel, hier komme ich. Orient, du trau meiner Kindheit. Konstantin Nobel, ich liebe dich. Er war a writer who, whose soul was homeless and he searched all his life for something um, that shows him where he's from, where he belongs to, this uh, oriental passion that he had because he was only a Jew. We also have a song when we're saying he was just a Jew. <laughs> and um, yeah, he searched for a place where, where he can stay, where, where he's from and where he belongs to, well, his soul, I think. So, who are him? Where does one go? And they came to the part of town that is uh, still called Charlottenburg, uh, but at the time was known as something else. Charlottengrad. On the streets of Charlottengrad, people drink strong black tea on a terrace. It's quite nice and much cheaper than Paris. On the streets of Charlottengrad, on the streets of Charlottengrad I'm hungry and don't have a penny But I'm in love with a beautiful genie On the streets of Charlottengrad On the streets of Charlottengrad Where you're either a Yid or a Russian And you never will pass for a Prussian on the streets of Charlottengrad The streets of Charlottengrad Are all covered with immigrant vermin Or so say Charlottenburg Germans On the streets of Charlottengrad What did he do with his new with his new identity. He made a living with it. He became a very successful journalist. He was a one-man Orient Express. Do you want to buy a world? Do you want to buy a culture? Do you want to buy a history, mystery, the prophet and our law? Let me take you to the east, let me take you into Asia, let me tell you about Lenin, Stalin, Genghis Khan, and the Shah. I know my way around the sword, I am appropriated with. Seeing from modern perspective, he was a refugee, and actually he was a very successful refugee. Like in Germany, he became a best-selling author, being just a Jew from Baku, from a Russian-speaking family. talking about like 1932, 33, 34, 35, and uh, Lev Esad found himself um, living as a very prominent, somewhat disgraced by scandal, but a prominent right wing, like reactionary journalist who did a lot of writing demonizing what was going on in, in the Soviet Union when people found out who he really was. All of the horrid embarrassment of his scandalous public divorce, combined with anti-Semitic harassment, forced his career to take a new course. Though this Jew from Baku was a monarchist who sympathized somewhat with the fascist cause, all of his names became poisonous due to national socialist laws. You see, it came out, Esad Bey was Lev Nussenbaum, which spelled his professional doom, and the Nazis banned him from publishing so he needed a nom de plume. So he became Kurban Said with a pseudonym he could be freed. 
The name was claimed by Esad Bey I ask you to join us to defend our home. Please let me go! Yes, who was Kurban Saeed? Who is the one we all read? The battle continues to go on today. Will it ever be settled or solved? Chaman Zeminli, Aaron Fels or Bey, Yusuf Elfridi or Esad Oive, it's better to not get involved. verlässt das Löwchen Wien und geht nach Rom. Er hasst noch immer Stalin und wird liberal Faschist. Den Papa Abraham lässt er in Nazi Wien zurück. Er möchte gern Mussolini Biograf werden. Mostra Eccellenza Benito. Mussolini, capo del governo italiano, como se Did I end up here with the pain in my feet With no money in my pocket and nothing to eat It looks like trouble loves me and it came here to stay Is that the price to pay for being a sad bear? Jamil, would you tell me why I should give up and die If was it time? Um, well... I, I, I'm ambivalent about Esad Bey. I mean, he, he was a fascist. You know, I'm, I'm ambivalent about his politics. I'm, I'm ambivalent about his his ideology. Jamil, could you tell me why I should give The question of what what relevance this story has today, if the goal is to disorient or confuse. Then, then that's sometimes the most positive thing that can happen when you tell a story. It was the time.